Hi, and welcome to this edition of Trader Talk TV. Today we've got Benjamin in the office from Triton. Benjamin, yes. welcome today. Thank you. Today we're going to talk about audio and measurement of audio and, uh, and then uh, leading into programmatic audio. So Benjamin, before we do that, just give us an overview of what you do and what Triton does. Yes, hi. So I'm, uh, I'm Benjamin. I oversee all the operations outside of US and Canada. We operate in about 45 countries uh, from, uh, from the Americas, uh, Asia, Africa, Europe, actually on all continents, I suppose, not in Ant Antarctica at this moment, but uh, <laughs> we are operating in, in many countries with different flavors. We all, it's all about audio. So we work with uh, radio publishers, so standard AM, FM publishers, podcast uh, publishers and online music services. Um, and we try to help them with a set of tools to uh, monetize their audience. Um, and so that's what Triton does. And I'm also in charge of the strategic partnerships um, outside of the U.S. because even though we're about 200 uh, employees, there's a lot of uh, countries to cover. So we need mm. to um, have uh, local partners uh, that uh, can uh, feel and sense how the demand for online audio is at and, and making sure to help the publishers uh, monetize their audience. Okay, so online audio is quite exciting part of the ecosystem. Um, you know, it's a lot of players in there, Pandora, Spotify, a lot of publishers doing their own audio podcasts, etc. But one of the big problems obviously is uh, measurement. Yes. And uh, I believe uh, the MRC um, in the US have come up with sort of a universal measurement uh, uh, strategy. So we want to talk about that today. Yeah. Um, and then obviously talk about your own platform and how it sort of feeds into that. So let's just talk about that, what the MRC is doing in the US. This gives an idea of what the uh, what their objective is and how they're sort of uh, rolling this out. Yeah, so the MRC, the, for the in short for Media Rating Console, is the is the, 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 the body that um, gives, um, find the rules because they, they have representative from the publishers and the agencies. So they establish the rules to measure audience reach in, 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 uh, on all type of channels, whether it's traditional, so TV, radio, or digital. They will set up rules saying what is a valid uh, impressions or a valid unique listener or a valid reach yeah and they will establish those uh, guidelines and then if as a company as a provider whether you're Nielsen, Comscore, Triton you want to get their the stamp of approval mm -hmm. you need to follow the recipe that they give mm. and you need to be audited so every year they force an audit to make sure that what you said you would be doing you actually did it and when you when when the audit passed, then you get a renewal of the uh, stamp of approval from the MRC. So Triton has been since uh, 2011 the only um, company offering an MRC accredited um, uh, measurement service called Webcast Metrics okay. uh, in in the U.S. So in okay. the U.S., we're the currency, meaning that the agencies when they do the planning and they want to know how many impressions or budget they will allocate to online audio, yeah. then they use webcast metrics data to make that decision. So let's talk about the, let's talk about the MRC piece yes. first, yeah. and then we can go into the, the platform. So how, how does it work and how does it bring all that detail together and how does it, yeah. so, it publish use it? So there's different endpoints um, that you have on, uh, on audio. So you have a set of, I would say, of uh, players like um, um, uh, iTunes, Windows Media Player, Winamps, uh, that where you could listen to audio, where yeah. whether it's downloaded or listen. Then you have a series of aggregators like um, uh, uh, TuneIn, um, iHeart Big Player, players, yeah. and all of those. Then you have uh, players like um, those uh, controlled by the publisher, like Spotify, uh, Pandora, SoundCloud, uh, SoundCloud uh, CBS. They, yeah. they have their own player. Yeah. And then lastly, you have a set of, uh, I would say, um, either Wi-Fi or, uh, or smart um, um, uh, speakers. So uh, whether Sonos, it's Sonos, well, yeah. uh, uh, Amazon, uh, Google, so all of those. So yeah. there is all of this is connected to a streaming infrastructure. Right. So there's there's sessions that starts. And, and what the MRC said here is you have a rule, like it has to be a, at least one minute duration, and then you need to measure 
um, every session from every type of player and the duration and, and have a way to parse logs to eliminate um, fraudulent IP address right. or IP address coming from the publishers. You don't mm -hmm. want to measure SoundCloud or, or Pandora employees listening to their own stream. So we eliminate a lot of that. Okay. And then um, it, gives, uh, it gives an output. So that output is, is, uh, is actually the, the webcast metric uh, tool from Triton. And we, you could see it two ways. So in, in the UI that we built, we have a software online. So you could log into this and see how many of your audience has been measured. And we can also, for some big clients like Pandora, Spotify, iHeart, push the data directly into the planning system like uh, Telmar, uh, MediaOcean, and uh, Strata. So I think I'm hiding that part, but it's uh, <laughs> it's uh, all the data is uh, fed directly in those planning right, systems. So right. when the the the, um, the planners or the brand managers at the agency they want to say, okay, this year we want to allocate um, how how much of our marketing budget we're allocating to online audio, then they they go into either um, their own planning system or uh, using webcast metrics data, and <clears throat> they look at the scale and they say, okay. We will allocate like 20% or 15% of our budget with the scale based on our strategy and what we want to accomplish. So this is the official way of getting the data and pushing it to the planners, buyers, and all of these guys. So effectively, this is a standardization of uh, online audio. Correct. Basically. So this is a this is For a metric measurement. that the measurement metric yeah. that the uh, that the industry can follow. And it means that more money will flow to 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 to, to the audio space. Basically. Yeah, exactly. And uh, a non eliminating fraud and, and all of that. So when the chief brand officer uh, of uh, Procter & Gamble said, this year we will only buy MRC accredited um, supply, what he meant was to make sure that he wouldn't buy false sites, robots, mm -hmm. or all mm -hmm. of that. Mm -hmm. So he said, if you don't have the MRC accredited... This is accredited Mr. Pritchard who made, who made his big grandstand... Uh, at the IAB Leadership yeah, yeah. Summit, yeah. So he said, we, I, I, won't, I won't buy stuff which is not accredited. The good news is online audio has been accredited since well, 2011 right. because everyone in the US is using the system. And then suddenly we started getting calls from the, um, the, the trade bodies and the other... Um, countries and which Europe. is the point I was going on to the next this is obviously a very much a US standard yeah the MRC is a US standard You're so right. how do you I mean is this potentially something that can be followed globally because obviously a lot of there's a lot of um, you know uh, publishers out there outside the US so can this be used outside of the of the US and how, how is that possible yeah yes the our platform is available across the US we actually measure a lot of uh, publishers already um, but it's not necessarily yet the official currency. So the system has been rolled out. And then a lot of those uh, joint industry committee, that's the name of the bodies that determine the, the, the measurement practice in each of the countries, they, they don't necessarily have uh, the same amount of resources than the MRC in the US. So often they will either be really inspired by the MRC and then do some uh, regional variations or um, they will simply adopt the MRC standard saying it's all right for us because what the MRC decided is not necessarily US centric in a sense. They said this, these are the rules to eliminate fraud, eliminate listenership coming from the companies. What is a valid session? I don't think that this will change per country. Sometimes what could change is saying instead of a minute threshold, yeah. it's maybe 30 second threshold. Okay. Or sometimes for the IP address in some region, we need to parse them a bit differently because yeah. they're less precise yeah. than in the US. Yeah. But aside from those, I think it's it's easy to use the same measurement system okay. across the globe. So this fit, fits in, into your into your global platform then? The, yes. The, it so fits. let's explain how this works at your, your own platform for programmatic audio. Yeah. So. Um, Do you want to use the rubber? Yeah, we could. Let's rub it out here. Yeah, we could maybe uh, erase this yeah. and then go to the platform. I would say one one thing I didn't point at, uh, aside from the uh, Telmar or or planning system integration in uh, 
and in um, uh, the Webcast Metrics UI is we publish rankers, and then I'll dive into the the platform. Sure. So we have the the US ranker. Right. We start. We have also a global. So that shows the top twenty of all the publishers across the. Oh, globe. I see. So basically, by, by what by by volume by. Uh, yeah. So we measure what we call active average active sessions. So the number of concurrent uh, listener in an hour oh, listening okay. to the system. Right. The average duration um, of those uh, streaming sessions. How often do you update the, the these ranks? So the ranker is published on a monthly basis. So right. Our system measures it in real time. But the ranker is updated on a week uh, on a monthly basis. And is that fed into the buyers basically about yes know, the type of media exactly, that you buy? right exactly. Okay. Then we published a LATAM ra uh, ranker uh, recently, and the reason why we will be expanding with those uh, other countries like maybe Middle East, Southeast Asia, uh, uh, Western Europe, is because of the marketplace. Yeah. So A two X our our programmatic marketplace was. Um, uh, launched in the U.S. Uh, four years and a half ago, we had uh, strategic partners like um, uh, CBS and some key publishers uh, like Slacker, MLB, part of the exchange with um, some uh, key buyers like Zaxis, yeah. working with uh, with uh, a proactive, I would say, platform like AppNexus to 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 start um, having the market uh, uh, to create the market because before then nothing was treated programmatically yeah. in audio so that yeah. was the start but then what happened is people were using these two saying okay i see the scale in the us but i need to see in latam because it's growing fast in latam and now we sure. see the growth of a2x in southeast asia in the middle east and then in, and in how Europe. do you get access to this this this, this so data? this is, is actually it, is on it, triton it's website on platform. it's oh, public it's on the... you don't need to pay for it you oh, okay. go on tritondigital.com right, right. and there's a there's a menu with the the the, the rankers so you okay. can go there and see them so you don't need to pay you need to pay when you use a planning system because sure. you're using that tool but not to just get the top uh, the top 20 or 25 depending on the okay. rankers so how does this how does this connect into the, your yeah. uh, programmatic audio piece so we have our exchange called A2X. Right. So A2X is a marketplace that is um, uh, available for DSPs. So we have DSPs like I talked about at Nexus. We have the Trade Desk. We have Audio Trade. Um, put acronyms and then we're working in, in adding others like MediaMat to Mogul, DBM. So they, they all, they, all the buyers using those they want to be able to trade audio because one thing that we realized working with this, we were wondering for four years, do we create a DSP for audio? Because the buyers will think this is how I want to buy audio or do we simply plug with existing DSP? That's a better strategy. Exactly. That's nobody, what needs, nobody needs another bidder. Nobody no, needs, that, nobody needs another bidder. I fully agree with you. So that's, that's what we also realized. And the other thing is, these guys do a tremendous job, the yeah. DSPs too. And they also have a lot of liquidity for you guys. Yeah, they have liquidity. So what's the point in competing with them? You know, exactly. Yeah. And they have a, 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 um, a really ex excellent relationship with the traders, the planners, yeah. the agencies. And the agencies, yeah. Yeah, so they're more, from our perspective, a channel partner for, to, to bring audio and promote audio. Than curious the, now, if from a, from, from a DSP's pr perspective, right, do they have like an audio file and that effectively, when they see the user they want, that's pushed to your yes. publishers. That's so, how it works. So yeah, so it was a bit complicated until the IAB released OpenRTB 2.4. Right. And DAST, and now an updated VAST. So basically with OpenRTB 2.4, which was released two years ago, because they just released 2.5 few months ago, it added the audio object. Right. So when the bidder bids, we passed the parameters that shows this is audio. Yeah. And then when they see audio, then in their uh, creative management, they go fetch uh, an audio creative. So yeah. DAST is almost like VAST, but instead of being a video file, it's an audio file with a companion banner. Right. So it's all automated. That's why with the standard from the IAB, now it's fully automated. So these guys that are still working on fine tuning the pipes is to adjust their bidder to recognize an audio uh, request and then sending the right right format. So this is interesting. So obviously we're going to talk about. Um, I think the MRC data is, are, is here. Yeah, to show the scale. So all of that 
it's fed into the DSPs or it's coming from uh, it's not fed directly in the DSP but the buyers will see oh this is the scale of audio I want to buy audio yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. all the scale I, I need I can reach younger uh, average age middle age or or, or, or older uh, people because uh, there is people listening to audio whether yeah. it's podcast yeah. music service or uh, AM FM across the globe so a couple of questions uh, Give me an overview of type of publishers using A2X. I mean, what type of publishers yeah. are in here? So here we have actually the, the three types of publishers. We have the AM, FM stations. So okay. we have uh, clients like uh, CBS, uh, Talpa in the Netherlands, uh, Sun Cross Astera in Australia, Prisa in uh, Spain, Latin America, Banderantes. Uh, um, in, in the US, actually, we have plenty of them. We have like MLB that has streams. Uh, Cumulus, uh, Intercom, and all of those stations. So we have, we have s traditional AM FM, but they're keep in mind that we do digital audio. So it's not their AM FM. It's, it's basically online. It's, it's online. Player, so basically, when you listen yeah. on a mobile phone or on a desktop or a smart speaker, and one thing also to know is we have a technology that replaces the over the air spot. Yeah. So if you listen to let's say ESPN. From uh, London, yeah, you don't get uh, New York City ads. Ad. You, you get, get the London-based ad. Yeah. Not just before the stream starts, but we cover all the spots. So you do spots within the actual thing. Yeah. So if you were to tune in on on uh, on a real radio and then open a mobile phone, you will get the same signal when when either the host is speaking or music is playing. Yeah. But at the the, the stop set at the ad break, then everything is replaced in real time and can be programmatically targeted, saying you're in that uh, neighborhood, you're in Soho, London. Um, I know there is, um, I don't know, uh, there is a prêt à manger in that place. So you do like a targeted ads and yeah. not just like a random. Uh, Can I ask a thing? question? In yeah. terms of like the, how you measure, I mean, what metric are these people buying against? Is it performance or is it branding? It's, it's more. Curious. I mean, like the reach of frequency or is it? Yeah, I would say that all of the above is, is true. But I think reach and frequency and branding are, 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 are the bulk of the buys because they see that audio brings brand awareness okay. and then we'll support direct response campaigns. So a lot of um, our partners, when what they do is they add audio on top of their media mix. So they see that when they add audio on top of, let's say, display and video performance based campaign, they see an increase in clicks or conversion yeah, yeah. because people seems to trust what is, um, is happening on the audio feed more than I suppose a, a, a display banner on right, the website. Right, right. So it brings brand awareness and, okay. and, and brand trust. So it improves the overall performance. So that's what we see from a lot of these guys. And also some some of the um, uh, DSPs like the Trade Desk uh, to Mogo Media Math, they also have a lot of brand buyers. Mm. Some other DSPs mm. may have more direct response buyer, but I would say that the top DSPs we're working with, they, they do have access to the branding budget. And do you talk to, so when you're, when you're pitching this, obviously you've got good relationships with the, DS, with the DSPs, but are the people who are using the DSPs predominantly trading desks within the agencies? Or is there a sort of a conflict between sort of the audio departments, like the radio buyers and the digital buyers? Is that something you're seeing more? Because obviously this is, if, if, if from a scalability proposition and for incremental revenue, it makes a ton of sense for CBS to sell this abroad or whatever. Um, but I'm wondering actually the local buyers who are in the agencies, is this conflict between the, the audio yeah, radio was... guys and the digital buyers who probably are the guys pulling the levers at, at the DSPs? Yeah, so I would say it was really the case when it started. Actually, it was not necessarily a conflict, but the DSPs like Zaxis, uh, the trading desk like Zaxis said, um, we want to buy audio, but then they didn't know where to find the budget. So they had to talk to the radio buyers. <laughs> right. And like Convinced five them. years ago, they said like, what is programmatic audio? So it was more like an, um, I, I, I suppose a clash of thinking than yeah, anything yeah. else. Yeah. Then that, that in some agencies, resulted in having conflicts between the traditional broadcast buyers and digital buyers. But I would say that what we've seen in the past four or five years operating first just in the US, the marketplace, and then in many countries is, is a merger or joint work between the two teams. So I think there's 
poly still conflicts in some of the offices, but we've seen a lot of uh, of uh, working together synergies between yeah, yeah. broadcast buyers and um, and uh, trading desks. So to answer your question is. You probably have a bunch of trading desks using the DSP, mm. but you also have, I would say, um, digital agencies, not just specialized in programmatic, but buying any type of digital agencies. And more and more, actually, um, traditional agencies, broadcast agencies, either asking us for a recommendation of a DSP to mm. use, mm. or that did select a DSP and are diving into programmatic. So that's why sometimes you have some DSPs that are when you see a DSP, which is not just geared for geeks that wants to, to optimize, then I think they have a, a lot of room to grow with the more broadcast buyers. That yeah. has sophisticated buy, but not at all performance base on clicks and stuff right. like that. So one final question, obviously, I'm just curious, you're the cold face of a lot of this. How fast is the programmatic audio uh, segment growing? I mean, we, we yes. hear a lot of... A lot of conversations, particularly like from the likes of Spotify, who now come in and they have an audio product. Yeah, I know they're pushing the video as well, but just curious to see how how big it's growing, or is there a lot of now money heading towards that? Yeah, direction? I think so. I actually I realized I didn't finish that part. So we have uh, AM FM, then we have pure plays like SoundCloud, uh, um, in the exchange, uh, Slacker, um, uh, nine seven seven. We're adding um, 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 local. Uh, pure plays like in the Middle East, Engami, mm. uh, or uh, Melon Music, uh, Langit in uh, in the in Southeast Asia. Right, so right. there's a lot of uh, of global and local brands. And then the last bit is is uh, podcasts. Everything. Related well, I was to just about to ask podcasts. that. Obviously, everybody's listening to podcasts now. Yeah. So. so I think podcasts. You have actually two types of podcasts. I think the trend of downloaded podcasts is solid, but what we're seeing growing fast is apps. more apps. Yeah. And I it, use. Um, there's a specific app I use for uh, podcasts and this and it's really really good but yeah so these podcasts are from my perspective more like a bit the online music service yeah. equivalent for talk content yeah so you you just stream those podcasts yeah. rather than download surely there's them. a huge opportunity there yeah, so, a lot of those podcasts aren't even monetized yeah. very well so what happened is A2X is a marketplace that that is connected with all of this but you talked about Spotify but SoundCloud had the same strategy to do PMPs so you have like some private deals that that uh, I'm not spelling that right. <laughs> so there's some uh, there's some uh, private deals being set up. So that's that's feeling that the demand is really like getting hard into um, the audio space. Right. They, they either, see an opportunity. Yeah. To... Either they want to do an audience buy across all the different um, assets, or they want to do private deals. That's why. We're releasing a new layer here called Yield Up. Yield Up, right. Yeah. So Yield for Yield Optimization. So Yield Up, which is an SSP for audio. And the reason that I said we don't need a DSP for audio is because you want to buy across all media. Yeah. But you need an SSP for audio. You're right. Because you need to be able to get on-demand, uh, sorry, on-demand content, downloaded content, and add replacement stitching content on right, the fly. Right, right. And then these guys, you don't want to tell the trade desk, you need to upload a Nog Vorbis file for Spotify, a AAC file for SoundCloud, an MP3 file for uh, CBS, and that codec and that bitrate. So what, what we do is they upload whatever they want, provided it's audio. And then here we have a transcoding farm that will just package the asset in the right, right format right. for whether you listen to the same ad on CBS, uh, SoundCloud, or a podcast, the the level of compression, the quality of the, the, the file and all of that is is uh, is correctly um, um, tuned. And then we have industry separations because in a lot of those um, um, environments, you don't want to have two competitors advertising back to back. Or, or having like the same ad back to back forever. So we yeah. need to have ways to correctly f enforce industry separation mm. and uh, frequency cap in complicated environments. Yeah. It's, it's far from being only browser or only mobile app. It's a it's mix of- voice. Yeah. yeah, it's really cross device from smart speakers to uh, 
dumb players. So that's what yield up is. is so doing, yield up is solving that tool. So basically giving. Uh, if a two x is probably your 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 um, name of the marketplace is your market marketplace, but this is your spot by uh, yeah that's that's our actually. that's our software yeah and we wanted to make make it easy so you have let's say a, a big buyer using the trade desk and they say I want to target SoundCloud you don't want to have like uh, two hundred emails trying to figure out how to make mm. that that thing you just go into yield up. You select the name of the the, the, the buyer with the, the, the ID of the buyer saying they're using the trade desk and this is the on my inventory yeah. and this is what I'm enabling and allowing and then is it a private auction or is it a fixed bid? Uh, is this going to be a RTB enabled? Yeah, so this is fully RTB uh, 2.4. Right. So it, this is pure programmatic. Okay. But supporting the four types of programmatic deals. So we support open marketplace right uh, a, a private marketplace mm -hmm. so we have some publishers that wants to aggregate across a group like all sports so they create like a sub marketplace mm. or a buyer like um, we have in india we work with madhouse they have um, their own set of publishers so they want to make sure they have a deal that span across all of those publishers we support then also like the standard uh, PMP, which is I'm buying on this publisher at that price yeah, point. Yeah. And then because it's the audio industry, when a publisher is using our, our, our publisher at server called TAP, they can reserve the inventory. Right. So it's so actually programmatic, uh, automated guaranteed yeah, programmatic yeah, deals. Yeah. So we support all of those angles. And then we've, for in terms of analytics, we've actually partnered with MetaMarket to get the best of okay. class in terms of mm. um, overview of what's happening in the exchange and how to fine tune. So there's a the UI layer, uh, for analytics layer reporting. Top, yeah, yeah, reporting yeah. layer. Because okay. we felt that, again, a bit like for this, you don't need There's to reinvent build, the yeah. wheel. I mean, the markets is pretty good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's why we decided to partner with these guys to make the, the analytics part. Okay. Well, Benjo, thanks for that. Thanks yeah. for the overview of MRC and overview of your platform and how you're rolling this out globally. And we'll have you in again. We'll, when you said, what, what is the um, the yield up um, uh, um, sort of launch? At the same time, you're watching this clip. <laughs> well, there you go, viewers. It's out there. So get All on right. to it. Thanks again, Thank Benjamin. All right. And that was Trader Talk TV, and we'll see you next time.